We'll call to order the regular meeting of the Slane Board of Education for Tuesday, August 12, 2014. I invite you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The board will meet in closed session uh, at the conclusion of the meeting uh, for the purposes of collective bargaining and also a legal matter. Um, at this point, if members of the audience wish to, wish to address the board for up to three minutes, they may do so. Are there any members of the audience who wish to address the board? There are no members. <laughs> <laughs> Superintendent Grady. All right, a um, couple of uh, announcements, but I'd first like to introduce um, kind of the newest member to the Saline Area Schools Administrative Team, um, Miss Michelle Sante. And uh, okay, she's going to tell us a little bit about herself as our new Heritage School Principal. Thank right. you. Thank you. Well, I'm from Monroe, Michigan, and I am delighted to be here. And I'm sure that a lot of people say that, but um, it's refreshing to be surrounded by educators who think like me and who believe in being on the cutting edge and always forward thinking, that's exciting. And you probably, I don't know how often you hear it, but I just feel like I'm in a perfect place and I am so happy to be here. So thank you very much. Welcome, welcome. Well, and, and, and Michelle is uh, affectionately known as Moose oh, yeah, down yeah. in Monroe yeah, County so old, and yeah. is a proficient bunco player. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's well, all the stories I'm gonna tell. <laughs> but I have more if I need them. <laughs> that part of the interview? Well, it came, it came out through our process. We do an elaborate research process. Yeah, boy, for them to dig and find that out. <laughs> Google it. Yeah. Um, the next thing, just so you, we've been working relative to kind of looking at some student activity accounts. If you recall, in the fall we had a report, or pardon me, in the spring we had done a report, and we really wanted to dig a little bit deeper into where things were going relative to our student activity report. We've made several um, key changes to improve those processes. We've also wanted to kind of review any spot where we're handling money, community ed, athletics, and so Plant Moran is in today, we'll be here tomorrow and, and Thursday, and uh, is looking into that a little bit deeper, I'm gonna provide us with a report. Plan to have a meeting, we have a stakeholder group associated with concessions, we plan to have a meeting uh, next Wednesday or Thursday, so I wanna touch base with a few of you who were part of that initial meeting um, to figure out if we're gonna be able to put together a meeting then. So we can report back to them as to, uh, as to the findings that have and kind of what our next steps are gonna be with concessions. We'll talk a little bit more about that during the agenda associated with food service. Um, in general, it's, it's a busy place around here. A lot of work, I'd like to commend our technology, our buildings and grounds, and, and clerical staff um, for a busy summer. It only gets busier from between now and when our, our students arrive uh, the day after Labor Day. Uh, from an administrative standpoint, um, we kicked it off a little bit uh, last week with our administrative retreat. They've been in really looking at class placements, class sizes, staffing. You know, with the, with the budget situation we're in right now, there's a lot of ifs and thens, and so we've really been refining that process to make sure that, that we meet our financial goals as well as continue to provide a quality education. So that's been a busy uh, focus for us the last uh, week or so in particular. Um, it's also the time where we start to have a lot of events. One, I would like to uh, make where we do, are again doing our utterly ridiculous event out at the community fair on Wednesday the 27th of August. Um, that'll be at 7 o'clock uh, in the Horse Arena. Um, we made some changes for this year's event, but again, it's a great opportunity. We encourage families and kids to come out, see their teachers, and, and, and see their principals participate. Pretty, pretty fun and uh, utterly ridiculous games. Um, the next night, we do have a community pep rally. Um, Selena Schools, we're partnering with Main Street uh, downtown. Similar to the music series, we're going to be having a pep rally at 7 p.m. celebrating all of our fall sports, our marching band, um, our cheerleaders down there to really kick off the school year. Um, that's the Thursday before we start school, and again, another downtown event that we can have, and, and hopefully you can all make it out to that and, and celebrate the start of the, the school year. Um, this coming Friday, a week from uh, this Friday, the 22nd, we do have our special education golf outing. Uh, that's an important day for, for our special education program as that's a large fundraiser and provides a lot of things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to provide uh, for them. So we're excited about, about that opportunity. If you haven't signed up to golf, um, please uh, take a look at your calendar if you can make it. Um, the, also, marching band. Uh, we have our marching band alumni night coming up. Um, that's the second uh, home game. It's actually on the um, 6th of September. And again, it's our second annual uh, alumni band night, and we've already have people signed up who came last year and excited to come again. And if you recall, they rehearse, um, learn a tune, or relearn a tune, I guess, at before school, we, before the uh, 
game. They have a tailgate there with the band. They get a t-shirt and they go down and, and join the band at halftime and, and they're on the field for that. And that's been a great, great addition to our fall, kind of our fall kickoff early season um, opportunity. So that's coming up the second um, Friday that we have uh, home football. And um, lastly, I passed around, I've, I've been involved a, a little more um, recently with the MASA um, to teach systemic school reform initiative. Um, and that's really what I would call the strategic framework for the uh, Michigan Association of School Administrators, really looking at what are the goals um, for us as, as educators. One of the, the things that um, superintendents and other school administrators will bemoan is the fact that we're not, um, you know, we don't see necessarily the legislation sometimes that we want to see coming out of Lansing. And so um, proactively, the, the association has taken steps to try and get their message and, and what we feel are really our, our key um, platform ideas out um, to our legislators, to our school boards, and to other associates. So there's been a lot of work put in these. Some of them are, are relatively controversial, but um, I'm in the leadership position with our region, and now uh, an opportunity to participate in that. We've been working on that uh, last week, and again, the last couple of days. So take a look at that. If you have any questions, let me know. But again, I want to make sure you're aware that the, the association um, also is working in kind of this strategic framework model. So a lot of updates, but that's it for me. Anything from board members? Todd? On Sunday night, we had the first annual Michigan Track Classic, which was at the, uh, the track stadium, which brought in Olympians and professional runners and very fast men and women to uh, Celine. And Celine is getting its name out there internationally as Track Town Michigan. And that's something that I would encourage us to try to grow because the one of the sponsors for that activity was um, the cell phone company. Verizon? Uh, no. Sprint. 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 No. T-Mobile. T-Mobile. was T-Mobile. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Grant. Thanks, Grant. Hey, Grant's here. And <laughs> the, C the CEO of T-Mobile was here. Oh. And they actually helped to fund the event, obviously, as a sponsor. But uh, um, we had we, we broke the Michigan mile record, ran a 353. We had seven men under four minute miles on our track. And the, uh, the ladies 800 that they ran just before it, they had two events running, was also just screaming. We had two minute 800 which, you know, is just, is Olympic time. Yeah. yeah. And so I would encourage next year that we, I mean, Scott helped obviously to uh, keep the ball rolling there with uh, uh, the sponsors and whatnot, but providing our facility. And I think that uh, we need to get more involved and I'm gonna be pushing the city to be more involved. It was, it was nice that it happened on um, Summerfest. Summer weekend weekend because some of the people came in to Summerfest and were saying that you know they had no idea that Celine was able to bring in such a great band and that kind of stuff but um, and it really it really was putting Celine on the map yeah so, very well attended yes yes Excellent. I think I, I don't I don't know what the number was but somewhere over 3,000 yeah. it would be my guess so, and it is it is an international event now Excellent. They flew in from all over the place, all over the U.S. $5,000 cash prize for first place. Who yep. was responsible for putting this on? It was uh, Nick, Willis Nick Willis is a meat organizer yeah. in the Michigan area. Promoter, I guess. For promoter, him. yeah. And he actually was a very fast runner himself. Uh, we had an event last year that was a, I don't remember the name of it, but it was the precursor that uh, had amazing attendance also. And from that, they said, well, why don't we try to do this more often? And then this year was the inaugural Michigan Track Classic, which they are planning on having cheap annually. And it'll be here each time, we think? Um, the plan right now is for it to be here each time, though they are making noise of maybe moving it to EMU. But I would much rather have it yeah. stay here right. if, we can, if we can fit it, the crowds in. Now, did we charge admission or anything? Or this, did this time we, we did. did. It was a five dollar admission fee. Um, I have no idea where those funds went. Whether they, no, they just yeah, they, they they rented the facility according to the facility, and then they ran, yeah they promoted it and then sponsored yeah. the event. So. Okay. Yeah. 
so I do believe our track program was involved with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think it's a fabulous event, and bringing that kind of stature into Celine, you know, yeah. maybe we've got another vendor that we can, you know, build a relationship with and not have to just always knock on Ford or Toyota and, and say, gee, you know, we need to uh, sell some advertising to you so you can put your name on our stadium. So. Anything else from board members? Yeah, um, we had the foundation meeting this morning. They have lots of activities kicking off um, uh, this fall. We have um, the uh, Hall of Fame um, halftime patio tail tailgate coming up on September 5th, and then um, a Hall of Fame banquet on. Um, September 6th, and I have uh, information that I will give the board members um, after this meeting. Um, they are, I gotta find the, I can't remember where it is here on the Hall of Fame. Okay, excuse me, the class of 2014, the people that they're honoring for the Hall of Fame Clement Car Corona, Carly Green, Cheryl um, Heft, Roy. Paul Mary, I'm sorry if I'm slaughtering these names, I'm sure I am. Um, Kay Raymond, Bonnie Rideout, Paul Tebow, and Kim Van Hoek. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a great opportunity to come out and as a board honor and thank everybody for, um, you know, the, 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 wonderful things that they've done with their life that are um, associated here with our, our school district. Um, some other things that they have um, coming up is um, they have published a book, The ABCs of uh, Saline Area Schools, and that's at the printers now, and they'll have a book signing coming up on the 18th, which will be very cool. It'll be at the... Um, Brood Awakenings. Brood Awakenings, thank you. <laughs> um, and then on September 23rd, there's a um, Foundation for Saline Area Schools kickoff. Um, they have a breakfast and a lunch that they're trying to fill tables to tell them what all of the activities that um, are the initiatives for the year for the foundation and, and basically we need to all help try to bring some people who maybe have never been there before and would like to learn more about the foundation. So we all have to think about who we want to invite to attend that. Okay? Any questions? Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Sunday <laughs> is the foundation one-room schoolhouse right. celebration. One o'clock. Ice, ice, ice cream social. social. Yeah, ice cream social. Ice cream social. And games. And games. And games. Yep. Come ready to play. I'd also like to thank the administration and staff that showed up on Saturday afternoon, morning afternoon to help to, with the children's <coughs> games at Summerfest. Everyone had a good time. I appreciate their help. Look forward to next year. <laughs> Excellent. Anything else from board members? Okay. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone. Uh, Okay, we'll give Karen a second. Chief of promotion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have no scheduled reports tonight. Uh, we do have uh, five action items. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Kara Yang as the 2014-15 student representative to the Board of Education. Have anything you want to mention Just, about? Um, yeah, I, I've um, spoken to Kara. We'll be setting up an opportunity for orientation. Uh, right. She's a senior with us, has been in the district for, for several years. Outstanding candidates. Is, uh, the high school kind of works through a process to select this person and um, had several quality candidates again this year, and we think she's going to be a great fit for the board. Excited going into political science and things. So Excellent. Sure to kind of get some experience in that area. Excellent. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to approve resolution to issue a uh, request for proposal and reduction in force for food service management. So moved. Paul. With a second from Todd. 
Um, just to, as you know, this is an issue we've been talking about for, for some time. We are ready now to pr promote and, and essentially get our bids out to the market. Um, it's taken a little bit longer than we would have liked. We have to work with the Michigan Department of Ed, and I'll let uh, Kurt Ellis talk a little bit about that process. Yeah. Once we, uh, we made the decision that this was a, an avenue we wanted to pursue, we've been working with our legal counsel, with Collins and Blaha, to develop the RFPs. The RFPs then need to be submitted to the Department of Ed for their approval before they can be published. That approval took place last mm -hmm. week, this Monday, or I'm sorry, Monday the 18th. Um, we have the capacity to send those out to people who have expressed interest to us. Thus far, there have been none, contrary to what you might have heard elsewhere. Um, but so, so we don't intend to send those out to anybody because there haven't been any inquiries to us. A week from Monday, then those will be posted on the statewide website, the bid for Michigan or buy for Michigan, it's unclear as to which acronym they're using these days. Um, and then we'll obviously have it on our website as well. Um, our goal is to have some a decision in May, uh, not a decision, um, information to present to you sometime in late September um, based on the timelines according to the uh, Department of Ed and our legal counsel. Um, we are working at this point at a meeting tomorrow to develop a temporary solution to bridge that gap so that we can start school on September 2nd with, uh, with food service operating at, at full capacity. Using existing staff. Correct. So what, are, what are the services that we're... Essentially, the, the, the management portion of food service, so you know, food purchasing, the um, you know, essentially the operational side of things, yes. the, the labor itself will continue to be provide, uh, provided internally for the support staff that's in place right now. So, Is there some uh, way of monitoring the quality of food that's being purchased? Are we there, there's uh, the federal government continues to give us more and more stringent guidelines in terms of what we can and cannot serve. So regardless of whether we're managing that locally or we're using an outside entity to manage it, we still need to follow federal guidelines. Um, interestingly enough, the, the, uh, the guidelines have had a direct impact on the profitability of our food service because in a community like Saline with a very low free and reduced population, we've made money on the a la carte items. Kids want to come in and they want to purchase you know, a cookie, a piece of pizza, order of french fries, chicken tenders, those kinds of things. Um, and those a la carte items are slowly disappearing from the available sales and being replaced by full lunches that are deemed nutritious by the federal government and frankly our kids don't seem to be too interested in buying those. So, um, but, but to answer your question directly, the quality is not an issue regardless of who's managing them. We don't have a lot of latitude in terms of what we, what we serve. Locally within the county, there are two districts outside of us who have kind of what I would call school staff managing it. The other districts have all moved to this model. So you know, once we move in this direction, there will be two. So they're kind of the other one. So this will be just a transfer uh, to a professional management group, and then the employees will remain district employees, so there will be no impact upon them. Correct. Well, and, and we've solicited RFPs in the past. At this point, when I've prepared to be that it will be a transfer because the, the, we don't know what the bids are going to come in looking like. Sure. Uh, so what we're trying to do is, again, benchmark that versus current cost. So when we benchmark that, we're looking at not only cost, but also the level of service. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, in the past, there's been a, uh, a state check mark that improved our uh, best practice, best funding, practice yeah. funding. Does this, this, does this meet what By doing this, we qualify for that segment of the best practice. Okay, I didn't know if they had eliminated that or if that is still, still there. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it, it, that's kind of a, an ancillary benefit to doing it. So. Okay. okay. Anything else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to approve revisions to policy 8670, administration of medications by school personnel, as submitted by the policy committee. So moved. Karen, we have a second. Four. And the chief has a second. <laughs> and that discussion? Uh, essentially, um, Karen Hervey came and met with us at our uh, last policy meeting. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Karen uh, for all the work she does and every time I meet with her I realize how lucky we are to have someone uh, as diligent as she is in that position. 
Um, basically, what we're uh, proposing here are changes to reflect legislation that was passed regarding uh, EpiPen administration. Um, so uh, what they're requiring is that each school building will carry two EpiPens. Uh, in this case, it'll be two sets. Uh, each set has two EpiPens on it. And at least two staff people are going to be required to be trained to recognize anaphylactic reactions and um, how to handle them. I know currently more than that is trained, more staff than that is actually trained. So we are already ahead of the game in that regard. So, so we'll have two trained at every building? Two trained at least. Yeah. And two of the pens in every building? Two pens. And probably building. their whole response team that they have in each school. That's true. I know like bus drivers have been trained. I have, so my son has um, life threatening allergies. And I know we've done a lot of research through the years, and, and Sling Schools is very well trained in how to handle these situations. Okay. So Good. we are ahead of the game on this. Good. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to participate in the State of Michigan School Loan Revolving Fund. So move. Chief. Support. Second from is that Paul. Okay. Discussion. Um, uh, turn it over to, to Janice Warner. But the packet was handed out uh, at the table today. So Janice, want to touch on? So every year we must pass a resolution that will participate in the school bond loan fund. This year we're anticipating paying into the school bond loan fund about three hundred and thirty-five thousand um, dollars. And as part of the application this year, we were required to do the annual millage recalculation. This was the first year for that. And it's to determine whether we can continue to levy the seven mills or if we have to increase that amount. And there's no change in the amount that we'll be levying. It'll be, it will remain at seven mills. Uh, to, to know, about 60 school districts have, have, are not in that window. There are 60 school districts that with the new qualification for the school bond loan fund, it now kicks it up. So, uh, which is a, a, a significant change from mm -hmm. the past. Yeah. Um, the school bond loan fund for us must be repaid by 2036, and right now it's estimated that we will pay off the school bond loan fund in 2025, so about 11 <coughs> years early. The current balance is just over $31 million. Is This is not the, the fund that we use to borrow from where we just are covering the, uh, no. the mismatch and... No. Yes, it, it, it is. We we cannot, with the seven mills that we are currently levying. No, this, this no, is, this is he's, saying, he's talking about the cash flow borrowing. Oh, no, 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 no. okay. Yeah. No. no, this is this is specific to our, essentially our bonds, right. yeah, a portion of our bonds, probably by the school bond. Okay. So it's an annual payment that we make to, to pay down the, the bond. Well, in the last few years, we've kind of gone back and forth between paying into the school bond loan fund or getting money from it. It covers the difference between our bond payments and the taxes that we're collecting on that seven mills. Gotcha. It makes up that difference. And right now, we're ahead of the game by about $335,000. Okay. And so we're, we're right on that cusp of being a paying district, of the, you know, moving forward. Okay. So and this, this, is not, this is not impact the budget. It's, it's neutral to the yeah. budget, right? Correct. Okay. And the reason we didn't need to raise the millage is because we are ahead? Because we no, are we didn't need... Off 11 years ahead? <coughs> um, no, it's essentially what, what the state has said is you, they really look at your capacity at seven mills to cover within the window. Right. So they look at the total taxable value within your community. And if your total taxable value hits essentially a, a qualifying window, which are more than does, you project to be able to have it paid off by your maximum paid off date. Okay. What has happened to some districts with the decline in property values and their millage rate is essentially what had, what had been allowed through school bond loan fund is you may have a, a bond that was, you had 30 years to pay and it was at seven, at your, what you were collecting at, it was gonna take you 50 years to, to pay it. And they wouldn't, would not be in a position where they would indicate that you had to raise your millage rate in order to pay it off by that 30. You'd allow, in this case, the seven to continue on. And so for some communities, two, two local communities, they recalculate and say, well, if you, if you had 30 years to pay it off, what would the rate need to be this year in order to have it paid off in 30 years? And, it, and your taxes typically in that case will go up to meet that qualification. So 
it, it was, it, you know, while it's a, a slight tweak in terms of things, it really, um, there were several high profile, not within our region, high profile districts that had leveraged that and had, had really had, had extended well beyond their, their available ability to pay within the window that they said they were going to be able to pay yes. based on the framework. So, unfortunately, it feels like a couple of districts that went well outside the norm, they've really crafted some, some relatively stringent qualifications around that. But yeah, I don't know, so. Heidi, do you want to, you lived in that world for a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually in the growing districts where they were growing really, really fast, they had to continue to build buildings, and then all of a sudden the property values dropped, and they're the ones that are really, really hurting and having to raise above that seven mils collected. So luckily our property values have sustained and yeah. we're not in that kind of a situation like many other districts are. So, so we'll be repaying probably within 11 years early. Yeah. Okay. So. okay. So in the event, it's not a Celine issue, okay. but in the event that it would need to change. How is the public informed of that? Well, they, literally, I, I believe the public wouldn't necessarily be informed other than on their tax bill because the school district wouldn't have to, act, wouldn't, in fact, not only wouldn't have to, but the school district wouldn't even act to, to establish the rate. The state then comes <laughs> in and sets that rate, and I think they notify the taxing authorities, which would, in this case would be municipal authorities. I don't know how, and again, I, you know, we may find out how this happens because there are two neighboring districts, Milan and Lincoln, where this is going to be impacting them in terms of how their rates are going to be uh, indicated. Yeah. The, the, the comments that I've heard from the school folks involved have said, what, in, in because they're kind of in this window now, they are operating under the rules that the bonds were passed under. The rules changed recently after they, and so field, so they're kind of caught in the middle where they went to their voters and said, this is the process, this is what happens, it'll never go above this. And that was a true statement based on the legislation at the time. Legislation change, changed the districts that had already had initially had, had bonds in place were not held harmless, and so now they're kind of, the uh, legislature essentially is going to have to inform the community as to say your, your rate's going up by a state mandate. Yeah. So it's an interesting dilemma and somewhat of a window timing issue right now. There is talk of other, um, I think, adjustments to the school bond loan fund over time. But I'm curious, is there a cap on that? A in, cap on how much? An upside? Let's say let's say it's at seven percent now. Uh, let's say property values drop by fifty percent. Would that seven percent then increase by fifty percent? Depending on their calculation, yeah. There's there's no cap that's the same. It, oh, could, it could double. Okay. It could triple. In yep. theory, I mean, it's somewhat of a theoretical because okay. typically your assessed values there's a smoothie effect and a five year window and different calculations that go into it. But yeah, if if you had a catastrophic property value loss under the current model, you could there's no yeah. cap on what it could go to. Yeah. Does it ever go below? Can it go below seven percent, or is that a, is that the floor? Um, well, that's what we have levied is seven yeah. percent, and so or seven mills. Um, so ours will remain constant at seven mills until we have paid off all of our debt funds. Okay. It's so so even if the property values say increase thirty percent, we would still levy the seven mills. Yeah, but the yeah, property but then we'd be paying off quicker. Off. Gotcha. Because seven okay. mills generate right. more money. Okay. Good. Any other questions or comments? And then if we do an additional bond, then that just pushes out the debt. Well, there's, there's, two, there's, two, there's two options. <laughs> there's, the, these, are, these are school bonds, these are qualified bonds. And so okay. you could do, in the past, we've typically jumped in and gone qualified. We potentially could say, because we have capacity under the school bond loan fund, and I'm not gonna get into, there's a, a statewide cap on the amount of loan, but we'll leave that aside. But internally, we have capacity to, to, to jump back in and say we're gonna, we're going to go, we're going to keep it at seven mills, and we're going to extend 10 years and generate $10 million, for example. Or you go unqualified. You could say, you know what, we want $10 million, and that's that's one mill for 15 years, and just say we're going to go one mill for 15 years. The rate would then be eight mills, but you would essentially have established, you wouldn't be subject to this type of, um, you wouldn't be in a school by loan fund. You simply would be paying as you go at that rate. Any other questions or comments? Combination of two. That's no. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to accept bids and adopt resolution to enter into a, an installment purchase agreement for the purchase of phone handsets and staff laptops. So moved. All for it. And a second from Todd. 
so um, as you remember at our meeting in June, we talked about the fact that we were purchasing new phone handsets, getting a new phone system, a voice over or VIOP. Um, our existing phone system is over 15 years old. In addition, we were getting laptops for all of the teaching staff except for Heritage and Special Ed because those two areas received laptops last year. So in total, it was just under $300,000. We did solicit uh, bids for an installment purchase agreement and we received two bids. The winning bid or the low bid was U.S. Bank Corps at 1.99%, uh, which we will be accepting. We will make four equal payments starting in August of 2015 in the amount of $78,413 and a few odd cents. Now the laptops that they did have, what will happen with those? They had desktops and those will be repurposed okay. throughout the district. What kind of laptops are they? MacBooks? Or Dell's. Yeah, either Dell's or Mac's. Um, the teachers got to select based on their needs. You know. In the phone handsets, is that part of the upgraded phone system? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When will those be here? They're here. Are, many of them are here, yeah. You're yeah. Seeing, yeah. They're here and on our desk, but not functioning quite yet. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah they're, they're not, they're kind of, they're simultaneous right now. We're not sure when the when the, the final string breaks on the cup that we have <laughs> currently running is when we're going to pass it over. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, you, to note, I think if you heard, Craig, the lease payment would begin in August of 15. And previously, we had, we had budgeted and planned on the, the first lease payment being in the current fiscal year. Um, we've now shifted that to the Excellent. next week, okay. okay. so that's a benefit to us in the short term. Good. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, discussion items. Community pep rally. Just wanted to make sure I didn't forget it. Um, the, again, the community pep rally is on the 28th. We're going to get you got some postcards. We'll post out. Please tell everyone to stop on up. Hopefully, yeah. grab dinner. Um, enjoy the pep rally. Yeah, I think this is in line with, uh, you know, within the framework, we talk about, uh, you know, getting closer to the community, getting closer to the business community, and the more events that we can have downtown, the better. And uh, uh, Superintendent Grade and I have talked extensively over the last year about putting something together like this downtown, and I think it'll be a fun event. I mean, one of the advantages we have, we're a one high school town, and we need to leverage that. And this is a good opportunity, get everybody together, get the band playing, and, and kind of set the tone for the fall sports season. And of course, there's a, a big football game the following night, and uh, it should be a good time. And that one thing, that, and I, I think we covered it, we're going to have posters for the businesses to put in the windows. I know I was at Bill's barber shop today. And <coughs> he, he, word, so he, he, he Bill so will get the word out. There's no doubt. He gets a lot of traffic there. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to authorize items A through D as part of the consent agenda. So move. Chief, with a second from Heidi. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, items scheduled on the next agenda. Don't have any specific items yet. We'll be going to that next yeah. board meeting, a regular board meeting, will be the first, actually, the second week of school. Um, so next one, and so filling that agenda up quickly. We do plan uh, the workshop session uh, for the second meeting in September. Um, we'll talk with uh, Mr. Lotch and we talked about a school improvement plan discussion so the board has a better understanding of what we're doing with our school improvement plans for the year in that process. So we've kind of got that one set. Okay, and then, uh, you know, we had talked about having a meeting two weeks from tonight to kind of to kind of establish goals. Uh, uh, you know, we can follow up on that and confirm that date, but that would be the uh, 26th, that Tuesday night, and maybe we'll start a little earlier, maybe start at 6, and then, but uh, if that works for everybody's calendars, that would be a good time to do it, because then, then we're dribbling into September, and, you know, things get kind of chaotic, chaotic once, uh, once school starts, so. Uh, let's try to target that date and see if we can make that date work. And that, uh, yeah, two weeks from tonight. And that, uh, 
maybe we'll bring some food in and yeah. get something like that. Yeah. That'll help get me there. Uh, this is the second opportunity for members of the audience to address the board. Are there any members of the audience who wish to address the board this evening? Okay. The next meeting of the Board of Education will be held on Tuesday, September 9th, 2014 at 6.30 here at Liberty. Uh, the, chair will enter, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to enter closed session of the Board of Education for the purposes of collective bargaining and a legal matter with the intent to reopen, uh, re-enter open session at 8 p.m. Um, the board will take no action after, after the closed session. Do we have a motion? Someone. Karen and Heidi. Okay, this is a roll call vote. Trustee Finest. Yes. Trustee Freeze. Yeah. Vice President Heft. Yes. President Holden. Yes. Secretary Heineck. Yes. Trustee Carter. Yes. Trustee Delhay. Yes. Yeah. We'll uh, let's take five minutes and then we'll we'll reconvene. <laughs>